So, in a few months, uh, there will be a world championship match between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Ian Nepomniachtchi or something. It's not hard to it's hard to say. Uh, I don't think uh, Nepomniachtchi has much of a chance, um, and there's a clear reason for that. Is chess history in in the, in the chess history uh, the challenger has always come with something new. Uh, of course, there's been challengers who didn't come with something new. I think maybe uh, Max Oeuvre is, is a good example that, that maybe it was a, the first scientific opening uh, to recession. But in general, uh, it, sort of the world champion has to renew the game in some sort of a way. And I don't think Nepomniachtchi is doing that. He's a great player, a strong player, and a very aggressive, dynamic player. And it will be an interesting match, especially since I don't really like uh, the way Carlsen is doing in matches. It's like he's getting really nervous. He's like he's feeling all the weight on his shoulders and has everything to lose. Uh, so the, And the challenger is saying, okay, I'm going to take my shot. And uh, so it becomes very uh, close race, even though that it's clear if you look at the ratings and if you look at the results that Carlsen is uh, the better player. But there is a guy coming up. Uh, he's in the top 10, Aliresa Firusha, former Iranian, now French player. It's too bad that the Iranians has these weird rules about playing Israeli players. But okay, uh, mixing politics and religion is never a good idea. And sport, uh, anyway. But he is very interesting. He's 18 years old and he's already playing in sort of a new kind of a way. Uh, you, you, you sense there, uh, that uh, he's bringing something to the table that we will... And, and he's, he's still learning it, but it's, it's, it's coming and you can feel it. It's a little bit like uh, when, when we saw Carlsen first, we realized that, okay, he was a little bit like Karpov, but a Karpov that could calculate uh, an, an, an attack like Kasparov. And, and we have the same with uh, Firusha. He's, uh, he's taking um, the, the sort of Anand uh, chess way where you have very uh, great intuitive uh, attacks uh, with more concrete uh, sort of calculation and so on. So he's, he's very interesting. He has a vivid uh, imagination and, uh, and his games are always very interesting. And the thing is that he is very creative, but at the same time, pretty effective um, another he's in this game he's playing against uh, Richard Rapport from Hungary who is also a very creative uh, player but he was not that effective in the beginning he was more into uh, to, to sort of being creative was more important than uh, getting results and uh, and Virusia is 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 getting the results while still being creative in this uh, game from uh, Norway chess uh, he is Killing uh, Rapport in a very nice way. So let's get on with the game. Uh, and we'll have a little bit of look at why um, Firusha might be the next challenger. Uh, I'm not saying that it's clear that Carson would win. But if he, he doesn't mess up, he should win the World Championship match against Nepomniachtchi. And uh, there will be, we will be need someone new. To, to, to renew the game, and Firusha is, I think, that player that will bring some new wave of dynamics, uh, like a sort of a, t a new kind of a tal, uh, where he's, 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 he's getting the, the game to a new level. Uh, it's already clear when you're, he's just turned 18 a few months ago, and you're 26 almost 70 or something you're 27 so 17 sorry uh, he's gonna be 28 uh, or maybe even the first player above 2900 uh, very 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 interesting player okay this is uh this is rosolimo uh knight f6 is not very common uh it's it's it kind of an interesting move uh mostly black players play g6 or e6 by the way i think bishop b5 must be a good move. Uh, White is getting uh, uh, the bishop out to a great square. On uh, it's it's like you you're getting the best of, of a lot of worlds here. Uh, 
in, the, in this kind of way, if you go D3, you'll have a great and sort of a Nimso Indian where you got your pawns uh, on, on the white square immediately. So this somehow must be if, be at least slightly better for white. Uh, but of course, it's there's a lot of theory. Uh, knight C3, uh, a lot of players take on C6 and just transpose into some G6 line. Um, is, is one possible move. Knight C3 is, is, is more aggressive and white is, is developing very fast. Uh, he got three pieces out in uh, in four moves and attacks uh, the knight here and take take a knight d5 and um, i remember in this position i played uh, the very weird knight d5 against the uh, simon Achterstein in a game a long time ago and i won a great game uh, against uh, the great norman play norwegian player uh, I will probably be a video at some point um, but here, uh, Verusia just castles. Uh, and White is, of course, ahead in development, has the knights out, but he lost the bishop pair. And this is uh, could be important. So Black is hoping for this bishop to become very strong, especially since this pawn here is, um, is, is, is gone away from the white squares. So the black the white squares bishop on c8 should be very strong someday. Uh, a6, c4, pushing the knight uh, before uh, retreating uh, white's knight, and here, and d6. And and if, if black is allowed to develop uh, normally here, he will be better with this bishop here being extremely strong. So here, uh, white takes a very bold decision, d4, here we go. Very interesting move. Um, getting ready to uh, to do something. I think if he d takes e5, you probably play d5 or something. So, but what about this? You can't take with the knight, then takes a pawn on e5, and uh, black will exchange queens. He will be thrilled to exchange queens with the bishop pair, and and uh, being behind in development, they will that will just disappear that problem. So. Here we go. Um, this looks kind of interesting, right? White is clearly ahead in development. This king is far away from castling, far away from castling, and it, it will not manage. Uh, but what about this move? Hitting uh, the knight and the rook, and so on here. So uh, white, black got one piece out, and it's standing on a1. So, so it's not uh, it's not clear uh, that that how to develop from here. Uh, White is getting all his pieces out like uh, super fast. So Black will have to catch up quick, uh, otherwise he will just be uh, well uh, run over very fast. Bishop b6 only move according to the computer. Rook a1 and Rook c8, and this is uh, sort of a Kind of, it makes it. It feels like Black should do something with the bishop, but actually counterattacking uh, is is often a good idea, and and hoping that the development problem will sort of solve itself at some point. Uh, and your Black is up a whole exchange. The thing with exchanges is that they are they're nice, especially in the ending. But before the ending, they are not that great. Uh, there you would probably prefer light pieces because they they can easily attack in the middle game than the rooks. Uh, knight d5, the computer does not like this move from Firusha. It says that uh, white should just play b3 and have a kind of a nice uh, advantage. Black will have big problems uh, getting his uh, piece out and white will probably be able to do some serious damage to black's position before he gets to finish his development. But it looks natural to, 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 to go here. And of course, you can't play g6 or something. You'll just take and there'll be some bishop g5 and it'll be a total disaster. So um, black has to take on e5. And it seems like white is getting a lot of pieces up. But where is the attack at the moment? It's not clear. Um, and the knight is pushed back. Uh, of course, this weakens uh, the e-file. And here we have uh, the first really critical situation on the board. 
and um, and here uh, black makes a mistake in in the defense it's these kind of things and this is where this is the kind of position you really don't want against a guy like Firusia because he's extremely good at finding the resources and preventing uh, the, the the defender from getting out and so on so here uh, black really have to think and you both have to to think about what you want but also calculate uh, a lot uh, and so so it's a and also think about the principles at play so if we look at the principles, we can see that okay, black has a big problem with uh, with, with 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 the development here. These pieces are uh, difficult to get out, and the king here we should make that red because it's in uh, the red. Uh, so evacuating the king uh, is important, and we have two uh, nasty knights ready to jump all over the position. We have a rook that's coming here or here so uh the, the white is getting all the pieces into the attack for sure so uh, we'll have to withstand that as black and uh, and and the, the trusted method is to exchange something but the problem for black is that what is his best piece here yeah that's this guy here uh the guarding the white squares and also black white does not have a white squared bishop. So if we can keep control of all the white squares, we will probably be okay. So getting rid of this bishop like he did, he played this move, is wrong. Uh, it weakens the white squares too much and, and leaves a nasty hole here. So instead he should probably play something like this and um, maybe putting the queen on c6, maybe playing bishop f5, um, maybe king f7, another move here could be something like this. Uh, looks extremely dangerous, um, but you, black only needs to finish his development if he can somehow get this pawn, if he, if he could just get rid of it, he would be fine, he would be, would be better, uh, uh, so he can get his, his pieces out. So here, on principle, he should try to keep this bishop on the board. He took here and here and um, and did something that's very natural. I hear he may might play e5, just letting this pawn sit on e6. It's not very nice, uh, very pleasant to have a pawn on, on this square and white will definitely have compensation, but you might survive. Uh, rook c5 also looks very natural uh, attacking here and, and hopefully getting ready to... Uh, to, to get the, the piece out. The problem is that, that black is not ready for uh, for the defense and, and this knight is constantly threatening to, to go here and make a total mess of white's position, of black's position, sorry. Queen d7 is also not a bad move. Um, and the rook here is, is rather good. It covers a lot of squares. There is uh, this idea uh, going forward also, queen f5 maybe. So uh, exchanging pieces is in general a good idea. Um, black gets the rook out of, uh, of the, the problem zone. And here uh, uh, Rapport makes another mistakes. Um, he is, is uh, and it's it's very very difficult to you you have to just you you have to use your instinct you have to calculate and so on it's very difficult and he plays this move and um, and from here Virusha just uh, conducts the attacks flawlessly um, the thing is these guys are not uh, gonna gonna get a a role in the game uh, until it's too late Rugi one all pieces are in the attack. Um, the last chance for black here is to go with what looks like an insane move, uh, e5. Um, and after bishop e5, the king tries to run from the bill uh, with, with with king d8. And and this is um, this is might be survivable. I think white has has great. He has a pawn up, and 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 it will be a long attack uh, for 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 black to try to 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 get out here but it's it's not impossible uh, i think the computer only says a plus uh, 0.2 or something in this position so this is is definitely not uh, completely uh, crazy but 
I would definitely prefer to be uh, be white here. Uh, but I would not probably never get this position because I would never sacrifice the exchange like Firusia did. Uh, and and I think it's it's a combination of tactical vision. You see a lot of lines and and some uh, I- amazing uh, intuition that that leads to this kind of a game because it's not everybody that can play this kind of game. So most of us will mess it up. Uh, here he plays this, and now it's all over. Knight comes in. Oops. Pains a lot. This knight on e6, if it gets to land there, it will not it will make the king never being able to 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 sort of finish his development. E5 was definitely the plan. Just saying, okay, I give back the exchange, uh, and uh, and we are all good friends, and we'll have an an ending where I'm even a pawn up. But it will not be here. And uh, and here I think um, Richard Report, who who is a very uh, creative player and calculates a lot of lines and is is very interesting to follow, realized that okay, this is this is definitely not good. You just because when he realized you can't take back due to knight f3 and this one will be beyond painful uh, to, to to when it lands um there will, there will you will lose some kind of material no matter what you do um he tries to 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 get rid of it the problem is of course the king is too too weak here and uh, but be careful there are some some tricks of course like this uh, check can't play f5, queen e6 wins a piece. King f7, check, check. And g3. White has time. Uh, no more back rank problems. We are ready for, for the final assault. This pin here is extremely annoying for black. The, the combi- combined with the king here makes the black position absolutely hopeless. Uh, h6, hoping to run away. Not gonna happen. Uh, rook d1 and and here and this is also Ferocia is he's, he's realized okay I'm actually winning here I'm I'm winning rather easily due to the pin on on here and the weakened white squares on the king side and the black king so there's no reason to try and be fancy just win the game uh, and and this is what he duly does uh, knight f3 threatening on d6 uh, rook e6 was the idea check nasty 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 uh, king f7 knight f5 is instantly uh, game over but even here uh, the knight is coming to f5 and will win uh, material on uh, g3 so here uh, black resigned there is absolutely no chance of uh, risking this so very interesting uh, game that uh, in this position d4 uh, sacrificing the exchange and then keeping the attack keeping the momentum going and um, and if if a guy like Firusha can do this against uh, Richard Report who's also now in the top 10 in the world uh, he will be extremely dangerous to everybody you could say that uh, Report was playing with fire uh, going for this against uh, a guy like Firuja. I would definitely feel very uncomfortable uh, taking a rook on a1 against uh, and, and attacking genius like uh, Firuja. Uh, but this is the style of Rapport. This is what he does. He uh, is, he's he's playing for a win and uh, he's very creative and saying okay. Uh, but this is the downside and so much your your development is not that great. So if I get get my my uh, my my things together i will be better of course he didn't manage in this game but sometimes he will against uh, lesser players than firusha i'm sure if it was me who was playing white in this game i would mess up the attack and uh, i would just be <laughs> the exchange down so it's not so easy to play this way this was uh, gm talks uh, thank you for watching i think firusha is definitely on the watch uh, because he's he's still learning technically and uh and but already now his his tactical uh vision and intuitive uh, handling of of uh, of the middle game is uh, in in a special class of its own and and he will be dangerous to everybody thank you for watching